Hi, this is Mrs. La Barbara. This is Regents Physics Chapter Seven, Work Power and Energy Video Three. Today's topic is kinetic and gravitational potential energy. The objectives are know the definitions and equations for kinetic and gravitational potential energy, understand the relationship between total work done and change in kinetic energy, understand the relationship between work done. To overcome gravity and change in gravitational potential energy, to understand that gravitational potential energy is relative, to be able to calculate kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy, work and energy are related. As we seen from the last lecture, work when work is done on a system, the system's energy changes. As a matter of fact, they are the same. The system's changing energy equals the amount of work done on it. So when you do positive work, the energy increases with the same amount. When you do negative work, the energy decreases by the same amount. Work and energy have the same unit; they are both in joules. Now there are many forms of energy. So there are kinetic, gravitational potential energy, elastic potential energy, and internal energy. Like work, all types of energy are scalar quantities, and again, all energy have the same unit, joules, as work. Let's talk about kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. When something is moving, it has kinetic energy. An object which has motion, whether it's in vertical or horizontal or in a circle, has kinetic energy. The equation for kinetic energy is Ke is one half m v squared. In this equation, Ke is kinetic energy in joules, m is the mass in kilograms, and v is speed in meters per second. Kinetic energy again is scalar quantity; it has no directions. So, in this equation, kinetic energy is、uh, Directly to the speed squared, therefore speed has more impact on kinetic energy than mass, because Ke is directly proportional to m, and Ke is proportional to e squared. So when you double the mass, you double the energy. However, when you double speed, energy will be quadrupled. So here is a graph of kinetic energy versus mass. That's a direct relationship, direct squared relationship. Is a parabola looks like this. Let's take a look at an example. An object moving with constant speed of twenty-five meters per second possesses four hundred fifty joules of kinetic energy. What is the object's mass? So here is what's given to you: Ke equals to four fifty joules. V is twenty-five meters per second. What is the mass? Solve. Ke equals one half mv squared. Ke four hundred fifty equals one half m times twenty five meters per second squared. You can solve this. M should be one point four kilograms. Let's take a look at more examples. So a car of mass m traveling at a speed v has a kinetic energy Ke. If the mass is doubled, well, if the mass is doubled, Ke will double also because that's a direct relationship. Then let's take a look what happens. Then its speed is halved. Its speed is halved. Ke will be quartered. So first you doubled, then you quartered. So as a result, the kinetic energy will become halved, because double is two. Two times one fourth is one half. So the kinetic energy is halved. Another example: a one kilogram rubber ball traveling east at four meters per second hits a wall and bounces back toward west at two meters per second. So first you're traveling four at four meters per second, then you're traveling at two meters per second. Your speed halved. If you halve your speed, kinetic energy will become quartered. So the answer is quartered. Total work done by the night force actually equals the change in kinetic energy.、Uh, how did we figure this out? We used the definition of work. Work is force times the distance. The total work. Is the work done by the net force times distance. So the net force is m times a times the distance. According to the equations, kinematic equations, d equals v f squared minus v i squared divided by two a. Now a and a cancels. 
we rearrange this equation that becomes one half m times vf squared minus one half times m vi squared this is a final kinetic energy this is initial kinetic energy so that's the that's the difference in kinetic energy that equals to work done by the net force or total work done by net force Let's take a look at this example. A 15 kilogram mass is moving at 7.5 meters per second on a horizontal frictionless surface. What is the total work that must be done on the mass to increase its speed to 11.5 meters per second? Let's take a look. So, oh, the total work done is changing kinetic energy. So, that means the final uh, kinetic minus initial kinetic. What is mass? 15 kilograms. Final speed, 11.5 meters per second. So use 1 half times 15 times 11.5 squared minus 1 half times 15 times 7.5 squared. You will have total work done is 570 joules. Now let's talk about gravitational potential energy. That is by a symbol of delta PE, potential energy. An object can store energy as a result of its position. The stored energy is called potential energy. Gravitational potential energy is stored energy due to its mass, its height, and the gravitational field. This, it only has energy because that is due to gravitational attraction of the Earth for the object it is in. Gravitational potential energy is scalar quantity. The unit for gravitational potential energy is same as the unit for kinetic energy is the same as work, which, which is joule. So let's take a look at a person on the swing. So here you'll have highest gravitational potential energy because you, you are really high. This one you'll have low gravitational potential energy. Here you'll have kind of like a medium gravitational potential energy. So how is um, gravitational Gravitational potential energy defined. Gravitational potential energy actually equals to work done against gravity. So if you lift an object, you apply a force equals to gravity. As a result, its position is higher. It will have more gravitational potential energy. Gravitational potential energy equals to work done against gravity. So work done against gravity equals to the force you applied, which has to be equals to gravity of the object times the displacement, you have to lift it. And gravity is m times g. The displacement is the change in height. So we call that gravitational potential energy, mg delta h. This g is gravitational attraction between the Earth and the object. That's actually is the mg. And delta h is change in height in meters. So gravitational potential energy is a property of Earth, mass, and a position. So you won't have, an uh, object won't just have gravitational potential energy. It's only when it is near Earth's surface. In outer space, it won't have gravitational potential energy because there is no attraction with a big object like Earth. So in this equation, m is mass in kilograms. This g is acceleration due to gravity. On Earth, is 9.81 meters per second squared. And the delta H, that's changing height in meters. So again, gravitational potential energy has a unit for joule. That joule is Newton times a meter. Newton is uh, ma, m is kilograms. A is meter per second squared times a meter. So that becomes one kilograms times meter squared over second squared. Okay, you can also use here is kilograms times a meter per second squared times a meter which gives you joules. Gravitational potential energy is relative. That is, in that equation, there is delta H. So here is a ball. There's three heights of A, B, and C. So the zero level can be chosen as A or B or C. For example, what is the gravitational potential energy at that point? It really depends on where you want gravitational energy to be zero it, because zero can be chosen at any point. If B is a zero, then all the gravitational potential energy will be given up if the ball falls from A to B. So at A, you'll have energy, then you lose that energy when it comes to B. 
So to determine the gravitational potential energy of an object, the zero height position must first be assigned. Typically, ground is the position of zero height, but it doesn't have to be. It could be relative to the height above the lab table. It could be relative to the bottom of a mountain. It could be the lowest position on a roller coaster. So it's your choice. That's why gravitational potential energy is relative. Let's take a look at this example. Comparing gravitational potential energy, you'll have four points, A, B, C, D, on the bridge over a mountain. Which point has greatest potential energy? Remember, gravitational potential energy is relative, so you have to choose your relative height. If this is a height, zero, then all of them have the same. If you choose this height, all of them still have the same height. This, still, they all have the same height. So it doesn't matter which point you choose, they all have the same potential energy. Example, work done against gravity equals changing potential energy. So the diagram shows a point A, B, C at or near Earth's surface. As the mass is moved from A to B, 100 joules of work are done against gravity. What is the amount of work done against gravity as an the same mass is moved from A to C. Let's see, the amount of work against gravity equals the change in potential energy. So in order to find the work done against gravity from A to C, we just have to see how much potential energy is C relative to A. Well, B and C have the same height. So B and C have the same potential energy. So that, therefore, since A to B is 100 joules, that's that's the work done against the gravity equals the change in potential energy. Now, A to C, change in potential energy has to be 100 joules. That must be equal to work done against the gravity. Therefore, the answer is 100 joules. So this is a very important point. If an object starts and ends the same height, the object has the same change in gravitational potential energy because gravity does the same amount of work regardless which path is taken. So from A to B, the same height, a to this point, to C, to B, you'll have the same, same work. Gravity did the same work. Uh, take a look at another example. Change of P versus vertical height. So this graph of gravitational potential energy versus vertical height of an object near Earth's surface is a straight line. In this straight line, the slope is the weight of the object because the slope is change P over change of h that equals mg which is the weight okay uh, last example in this graph line to represent the relationship between vertical height and gravitational potential energy for an object near earth's surface what is the meaning of the slope the slope is the weight which line represents the relationship between gravitational potential energy and the vertical height for an object having greater mass than object represented by line two well, the deeper the, steeper the slope, the more weight. So that means more mass. In this case, line one has steeper slope. So line one, because the slope is bigger, indicating its weight is bigger, which means it has bigger mass. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.